Scripture reading for today is taken from Numbers chapter 35. Numbers chapter 35, and beginning to read at the ninth verse. Then the Lord spoke, or <coughs> said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, Select some towns to be your cities of refuge, to which a person who has killed someone accidentally may flee. They will be places of refuge from the avenger, so that a person accused of murder may not die before he stands trial before the assembly. These six towns you will give, give, you give, these six towns you give will be your cities of refuge. Give three on this side of the Jordan and three on Canaan on the cities of refuge. These six towns will be a place of refuge for Israelites, aliens, and any other people living among them, so that anyone who has killed another accidentally can flee there. And then dropping down to verse 25. The assembly must protect the one accused of murder from the avenger of blood and send him back to the city of refuge to which he fled. He must stay there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with holy oil. But if the accused ever goes outside the limits of the city of refuge to which he has fled, the avenger of blood finds him outside the city the avenger of blood may kill the accused without being guilty of murder. The accused must stay in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Only after the death of the high priest may he return to his own property. Reading to the end of the 28th verse of that portion of God's word. And some of that might sound a little strange, but... <laughs> Uh, this is Old Testament, but it has a very up-to-date New Testament parallel, sort of. Uh, getting a little background of this story of these cities of refuge, uh, the idea back in those days was that if someone killed a person accidentally... It's not intentional. It's sort of like today, you know, we have the difference between murder and uh, man, uh, manslaughter, yes. Quite a difference there. And uh, this is not for the murderer that really intended to kill some. But uh, this passage, this uh, arrangement they had there was uh, really for those who uh, had maybe accidentally killed somebody, uh, uh, Certainly nowadays in cars that can happen very easily, but there are ways that it could happen back there. And so if that happened, they could flee to one of these cities of refuge and be safe there. The avenger of blood, now that might seem kind of a strange idea, but uh, the policy then was retribution, uh, that if... Uh, uh, if your brother was killed, then it would be your responsibility to go and kill the person that killed him, you know, to get back. He was the avenger to avenge that, that blood of his brother. And uh, uh, so the killer, the one who killed them, could be in danger. And if it was an accident, uh, he could flee to this uh, city of, of refuge and the avenger could not uh, get to him there. Just a little bit of background there. Well, we're living in a day and age when we have a great avenger that's after everybody. That's Satan, isn't it? Satan is out to kill and destroy. But God is out to rescue. <laughs> he has his place of rescue. Not a city with walls around, but uh, in the presence of God. But when a man sinned, uh, he placed himself, when mankind sinned, he placed himself under Satan. Satan has uh, 
a claim on all those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. How important it is to come to know the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only to know it, but accept it and to follow in it. So looking at these cities of uh, refuge, uh, refuge for the guilty. In verse 11, we go back a little bit there, it says, Yea, shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you that the slayer may flee there, which killeth a person unawares. <clears throat> if his plea is accepted at the city, then uh, no one could, could harm him. He was in a place of safety. Isn't it good to be in a place of safety in any situation? But most of all, spiritually, to know the Lord, to be in that place of safety today. In this city of uh, refuge, the person was uh, safe from the avenger that I spoke to about a minute ago there. It says in verse 12, They shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. Had to have fair judgment. And so he was protected uh, until that time and for that particular purpose. The great thing about this was it was for all people. You notice that down in verse 15. These six cities shall be refuge, both for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee there. Not just for the people of Israel, but anybody in the, uh, in the society. And it says, everyone. I like the fact that the Bible speaks so often of everyone, doesn't it? doesn't just deal with certain privileged people. The gospel is for everyone who will receive it. The blessings of God are available for all. The only reason people don't receive the blessing of God is because they don't receive it. It's available. Isn't that wonderful to thing, know that a thing is available uh, to whosoever. Anybody can. I don't know if they do it down here, but the little town I pastored in out west, uh, the banks uh, would always quite often have a promotion and some other businesses, but often the banks, and so they'd have a day when there was coffee and donuts there for anybody who wanted to drop in. You didn't have to be a customer of the bank, although normally you would be, you know, <laughs> not too many people would, but, but it was there. They'd have a sign out, you know, about this special day, and there was coffee and donuts available, and anybody could drop in. And some of us did. <laughs> but... As some would just walk on by, they, they wouldn't. Well, that was okay. Maybe they didn't want any, they, whatever. Uh, but it was available to whosoever would. You know, uh, The banks were generous. And I feel the banks get enough out of you than anything they're giving back. You know, <laughs> But uh, I thought that was kind of a picture of the grace of God, isn't it? He says, here's my grace. It's available for everyone who will come and receive it. And some receive it, but others don't. Others can pass by on their busy way, and how often people say, well, uh, I, I'm so busy, I, I don't have time for these things. Did you read your Bible and pray this morning? Well, I was so busy, I didn't have time. Uh, can you get out to prayer meeting? Can you get out to Bible study? Well, I'm so busy I don't have time. <laughs> uh, well, the, the opportunity is available there. And those who come, I believe, are blessed by it. And those who don't come miss uh, that privilege, don't they? And that's why we want to reach out to people around about the church, is around about the community. Not just to fill the, the seats here. Sure, it would be nice to see every seat full. And we're looking forward to that. But uh, that's not the purpose. The purpose is we have found something so wonderful in the gospel of Jesus Christ 
that means so much to us, that's freed us from sin and given us victory and a joy as we walk through life, that we want to share that with others. We realize what people are missing if they are not uh, enjoying the gospel. They may not realize it, but, but since it's, we've discovered it, we realize it, and we want them to share that. And it's for everyone, that great news. Just as this city of refuge was there for all, any uh, one who uh, was guilty of uh, killing someone, uh, that could flee there. Now, some would not. And they, were, they would take the chance of the avenger of blood catching them and, and killing them. But it was there for whosoever would uh, flee to it. And the glorious message of the gospel is free for all who will receive it. All who will flee to Jesus Christ and receive him as their savior. We'll say more about that as we go along a little later. But let's uh, for a moment look at the duration of the stay. How long could he stay in this uh, uh, city of refuge? Well, it was an unknown date, really. It's not like now, you know, somebody's uh, sentenced to prison for so many days or so many years or uh, whatever it is, and, and they can count off the time until they will be released uh, from prison. But uh, this was unknown. It, but there was a pattern. It says in the 25th verse there, and uh, <clears throat> the latter part of the verse at least, that the avenger of blood, the congregation, shall restore him to the city of his refuge while he was fled. And he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. Until the death of the high priest. Now that's, you know, laws were different back then. <laughs> but uh, that was a time. Well, if he was lucky, maybe the high priest would die soon. <laughs> he may, uh, on the other hand, the high priest might last a long time. Uh, but no matter how long that high priest lived, it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years, it could be 30 years, but, but he was safe in that city as long as that uh, high priest lived. That was... Uh, the way the sentence was written down. They would protect him for all that time. He was safe there. But to leave it, to leave that city at any time before the high priest died, <laughs> would forfeit his safety and forfeit his life. In the 26th verse, it says, if the sl slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the avenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the avenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood. The avenger had that uh, privilege. So this person needed to stay within the city. It wasn't just good enough to flee to the city and, and get in the city, but he had to stay in the city. And we'll come to some of that significance a little more. But <clears throat> There was no other protection for him. There was no buying his way out. He couldn't uh, bribe the, the high priest, as it were. He couldn't uh, uh, pay a fine. He couldn't do flea bargaining. We hear that a lot today, you know. The, somebody will have a flea bargain so that they can, uh, they can admit to this so they can get out of a more serious crime. No, there was no way that he could buy his way out of this, uh, this situation. The 32nd verse said, Ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land. Take no satisfaction. Don't take any bribe. Don't take any uh, payment for him. There's no way that he can get safety. No way that he can uh, leave the city without risking the avenger of blood coming and, and getting him and killing him. You can't earn your way out. You can't buy your way out. 
Sounds like the way of salvation, doesn't it? And that is a pattern that it is really showing to us. The death of the high priest uh, provided freedom. I would imagine this person would be waiting and hoping the priest would die soon so he could get out. But that would be the only way to freedom. There had to be a death there. And doesn't that look forward to Jesus' death for mankind? We don't have to wait for someone to die. Someone already died for us. Jesus Christ went to that cross of Calvary to shed his blood, have his body broken. He died for us. Great news is that he rose again, he lives, and we have a living Lord. And that's our hope. Because he who died for us is alive today to keep us. Just as that city of refuge remained there for them until that death of the high priest. But our high priest has already paid the price. Glory to his name. And he is able and willing to not only save us, but to keep us forever. We have a place of safety. That is the whole good news of the gospel, isn't it? That we have a place of safety. Jesus said in John 6 and uh, uh, verse 37, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Isn't that great news? Isn't that wonderful to be able to share with people? That all who will come to Jesus Christ, he will in no wise cast out. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they've done. He can forgive. He can redeem. He can lift one from the deep depths of despair into the heights of joy and gladness with him. He will not refuse anyone who will come. See, the only reason people are lost is because they haven't come to Jesus Christ. The only reason there's anybody in hell today is because they didn't come to Jesus Christ. They're not there for the things they did. They're there for the things they didn't do. They didn't receive his salvation. Isn't that, great? Isn't that wonderful to be able to share with people? Somebody said, oh, you don't know my life. You don't know the things I've done. We don't need to know. God knows. And he's aware. And he remembers. But if you confess them to him, have received him, he'll put them in the sea of his forgetfulness, never to be remembered against him no more. You don't have to go back again after you've confessed your sins to him if you've been sincere about it and received Jesus Christ and let him forgive you. You don't have to remind him of his sins again because he's already forgotten them. Satan will try to remind you. As the expression goes, when Satan tells, talks to you about your past, you just remind him of his future, <laughs> where he's going. <laughs> oh, what a joy it is to know the peace of God that he has looked after our needs. That we have a place of refuge where we can abide with Christ. All have sinned. The Bible tells us that very uh, clearly. Romans uh, uh, for instance, in uh, Romans <coughs> 3 and verse 23, that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have. But Jesus has died for all. <laughs> That's the good news. That's the other side of the, the story, isn't it? The bad news is that all have sinned. The good news is that Jesus died for all, that he gave us deliverance, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
That is a gift. Anybody can receive a gift. Uh, if you need a particular object, you want to get it, uh, you might have to check your bank account, <laughs> you know, and see whether you can afford it. And if you can afford it, you can get it. But if you can't afford it, you have to do without it. Now, I know nowadays everybody puts it on credit. but <laughs> That's another story. We'll get into that part. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you have to. But if somebody gives you a gift, it doesn't matter whether you have any money in your pocket or not, does it? You could be dead broke. You could be in debt. But you can still receive a gift. That's why we enjoy Christmas and birthdays and things, you know. We get something we don't have to pay for. <laughs> yes, we can all receive a gift. And the glorious news of the gospel is that it's a gift. It's not offered at a price. There's no price tag on it. There's no discounts. It's just a free the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, all of sin. But Jesus died for all. In the fifth uh, chapter, you know, it's in the fourth chapter, it says all have sinned. Fifth chapter of, uh, of uh, Romans, and the uh, eighth verse says, God commendeth his love toward us, that well, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's a great, that's one of my favorite verses. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't say straighten out your life and then I'll consider you. That's man's way. And that's the devil's way. Oh, how many people the devil is keeping away from God by saying, well, you've got to straighten this up. You've got to change this. You've got to break that habit. All those things, all those things might be good to do, but, but they're not the way in. And he tries to deceive people that way and does a very good job of it, by the way. How often have you maybe tried to witness to somebody and, and tried to point them to Jesus Christ and they say, well, uh, I've got to straighten this out first. I've got to break this habit and then I'll come to the Lord. Well, the old devil can keep you going for a long time that way. Don't worry about breaking. Don't, don't just take it for granted you're going to, but don't worry about breaking. Him. Turn to the Lord. Let him break it. Let him help you. And incidentally, that's a good thing to, uh, to pray if you're praying for somebody. Don't pray that so-and-so will break such and such a habit. Pray that the Lord will come into their life and help them to enable them to break that habit. Because he is a great deliverer. He can do more in a moment than we can do in years. But oh, how many are struggling along, trying to break the habit, trying to do the right thing, trying to earn their salvation, more or less. But Jesus died when? While we were yet sinners. He didn't wait for people to straighten up while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He paid that price. He offers us that place of refuge in him. But we must flee to him. Just as that uh, one that had killed somebody could flee to the city of refuge. So we flee to our city of refuge, Jesus Christ, our glorious Redeemer. We are safe in his keeping. The old hymn said, safe in the arms of Jesus, safe in his gentle care. Safe in the arms of Jesus. We're always safe when we're in the arms of Jesus, as it were. When we're in uh, contact with him, when we're trusting in him. When we get trusting in ourselves, we have no safety. When we get trusting in other people, we have no safety. But when we trust in Jesus Christ, we are safe. We're in a place of refuge, just as that man in the Old Testament day was. Oh, how safe it is, how wonderful it is to be in the arms of Jesus, in his protection. Hebrews 7 and verse 25 said, 
He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Our ever-living Lord is making intercession for us, pleading our case, as it were, just as that person that fled to the city of refuge could plead his case and find acceptance there in that city of refuge where he was safe from the avenger, where he could live a normal life there, safe, protected by the city that we are safe, protected by the great Son of God, Jesus Christ, who loved us and died for us, that we might be redeemed from all sin and kept by his glorious power. Safe. Safe with him. But stray from him, and the devil can destroy. And that's the sad thing, that there are those who will stray from him. I would imagine back there, there was the odd one who would leave that city of refuge. I'm tired of being here. I feel so confined. I, I just want to go my own way. And he'd go out of the city of refuge and probably be caught by the avenger of blood and killed. And there are those who at one time were serving God with all their heart and soul and mind and strength, but for some reason, falling prey to Satan, they've left that place of refuge. They're not as close to God as they were. They've, just, they've left. They're no longer in the protection of God. Oh, it's not that he forgets them, but they forsake him. They go their own way. Every church has people that used to come. People that served the Lord, but they've drifted away. Oh, how important it is to bring them back, to seek them, bring them back to the Lord where they are safe in the presence of God again. But when one strays from God, the devil's there to destroy. He's just waiting for the opportunity. Oh, how important it is to keep in that city of refuge, <laughs> to keep in that fellowship with God, to keep faithful to him, to trust him, to rely upon him to keep us to the uttermost. He's able. He wants to do it. Able all to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. He lives. He's, there our, he's our refuge. How long? Here, how long do we need to keep in the Fellowship of Jesus Christ close to him. Not just for a certain length of time, but what was it in the Old Testament? Till the priest died. You might say, till Jesus comes. Whether he comes by taking us through death or whether he comes in his glorious reappearing. Whatever it is, we need to keep in fellowship with him. It's not enough to say, well, I, I spent so many years serving God, so now I can just uh, go my own way. No. You have to keep in the presence of God. Keep true to him. Keep trusting him. Keep relying upon him until he comes for us and takes us unto himself. Are you enjoying the uh, protection of Jesus? Do you sense that he is with you, keeping you? Not only the day that you received him as Savior, but he's keeping you day by day. You're living in his presence, enjoying his presence. Oh, are you enjoying that protection of Jesus? Or have you moved outside 
the city of refuge. Hey, you're not as close to Jesus as you once were. George Beverly Shea used to sing the song that if you're not as God's not as near as he once was, who moved? <laughs> yeah. Right, who moved? It wasn't God. I trust that no one here has moved away from the presence of God, but if you have, come back into his protection. Some question why things happen. Why God is not protecting them. That's really not the right question. The question is, have I moved away from his protection? Perhaps they have left his refuge. And so they're not experiencing his protection, his, his blessing, his guidance. The answer is to come back into the presence of God. Come, flee back to Jesus for safety. He's just waiting to receive you. You know, there's a hymn in the songbook, and I guess maybe we may not know it, but I'd just like to refer to a couple of lines. You know, our, our altar is open as a place of prayer. I know we've got some decorations, but there's room between them. I appreciate the lovely decorations, by the way. But th this song says, come just as you are. Those who are troubled and burdened, Come to the Savior, a new life begin. Come just as you are. And the fourth verse says, Not of your goodness for sin can atone. Come just as you are. Trust in the merit of Jesus alone. And come just as you are. Come just as you are. Oh, come just as you are. Turn from your sin, let the Savior come in. And come just as you are. That's the invitation. That was the invitation of the guilty person to come to the city of refuge. And that's the invitation to all today to come to Jesus. Oh, if you're not as close to Jesus as you ought to be, as you'd like to be, as you once were, why not come? And this altar is a good place to come and just tell Jesus, Lord, I, I want to come closer to you. I want to come into your protection.